you all for tuning in today and stopping by to visit with We Are One today. Today is a day of celebration. We honor our mothers today, and I just want to thank God right now and for all of our mothers, all of our mothers, our mas, our mamas, our mommies, our mother, the second mother, the other mother, the stepmother, the godmother, the play mother, uh, the foster mother, the adopted mother, the Madeas, and also you just sit on the mother's board. I want to thank all mothers today because without mothers, none of us would be here today. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Uh, thank you for always being there for me and always being a voice of reason. I know that no matter what I go through, you're always there in my corner with me. Um, also, Happy Mother's Day to my uh, mother-in-law, Herdestine Ellis. I know you in the heaven uh, looking down and smiling down upon us and being our guardian angel. So Happy Mother's Day to you as well. And Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. Uh, without you all, there's no us. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, happy Mother's Day, everyone. Be blessed. I'd like to take this moment to uh, wish my wife Sharon, uh, my daughter Yancey, my daughter-in-law Cassandra, and mothers um, at the We Are One Church and around the world, uh, just a happy Mother's Day. Uh, I've said it before that there's only one thing that's better than a mother, and that's a mother who loves the Lord. If your mother's here and uh, you haven't reached out to her today or, or this week, I suggest that you do so because time really is fleeting. I was just looking at a photo of my mother and, and as you all can see, I look just like her. And uh, also in memory of her, uh, I would like to also do a shout out. Happy Mother's Day. Love you all.
Now give God glory for His gracious love this morning. Shout out to Him like you appreciate Him this morning. That His love never turns from you. That He chases you down time and time again. And He fights till you're found, till you come back home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God glory. Hallelujah.
Give God glory. Give him your yes to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in honor of Mother's Day, I want to come before you and share with you uh, some scripture, but also uh, how it relates to our mothers and the value of mothers and what mothers have done for us, uh, even in their teachings. It brings me to a place where I'm reminded of all the things, you know, our mothers teach us while we're growing up. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 1.8, it says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. So we want to make sure that we not forsake the laws of our mother. Now, what are some of those laws of our mother? Sometimes our mothers tell us, don't do this, don't do that. You know better than that. Put that down. Uh, you can be better than that. But one that stands out to me the most is kind of yielding to my topic today is when the mother, you bring people to the home and you want to introduce your friends, you want to, do, you want to introduce your uh, uh, colleagues, you want to introduce people to your mother. Even if you're dating and you want to introduce someone that, you, that means something to you, to your mother, she always says, affectionately. Baby, who your people? So today we're going to talk about what does mother mean when she says, baby, who your people? We're going to come from the scripture today of Matthew 12, uh, and we're going to talk about what mother meant when she said, baby, who your people? So if you will turn with me to Matthew 12 and 48. I'm sorry, let's go back to uh, 46, 46 through 50. And the scripture reads, While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Referring to Jesus. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak to thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord God, giving you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, today we celebrate mothers, and we know that you have a divine purpose for mothers, because if you didn't, we wouldn't have them. Lord, you gave us mothers to receive, to conceive, to nurture, to bring forth, and to teach. You remind us in your word, Lord God, not to forsake the commands of our mother. 
So Lord, today I ask that you use me for the edification of your kingdom and the building of the church, Lord God, that the hearers of your word and the hearers of this message shall be able to go forth, Lord God, and mature and grow and become that which you have divinely ordered for them to become. Lord, I thank you for this word today. I ask that you use me as a vessel, none of me and all of you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, mother says, baby, who your people? So, there are four things I want to share with you about why mother said, baby, who your people? So, let's go back to the scripture. Verse 46, it says, yeah, yet while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Now, his mother and brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. So picture this. Someone from the outside, they were not where he, they were not, in the place where he was. They were standing without. But they had a desire. And desire is a longing. It's a hope. It's a, it's, a, it's a longing and a hope and a passion to be with someone that you care about. So in this case, it was Jesus' mother and his brethren who were standing outside of the realm of where he was having a longing and a passion and a hope to be with him. Now, what we're talking about today is not just about baby who your people, it's about family. It's about mother asking this question because as part of her assignment as a mother is to protect, to nurture the seed which God had given her to bring forth. So she wants to know who's around her seed. So now you have, in this case, the mother and the brethren without. So think about your friends are without, your colleagues are without. You have someone who wants to pursue you, they're without. But they have a longing and a hope and a passion to be with you, a desire. Not just to be with you, a desire, but they want to speak to you. So let's talk about, before we go on to, to, the, to my second point, the first point is desire. Let's, let's look at what desire really is. And we think about desire according to scripture, Psalms 37.4. And Psalms 37.4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, Sometimes people misinterpret this scripture. Let's read it again. Psalms 37, 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, in the Lord, and he shall give thee, he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. See, it didn't say he would give you your heart's desire. He said he would give you the desires of your heart. In other words, when you delight in him, when you spend time with him, he gives you a desire. So one of the things that in the scripture that we started off with, there was a desire that was given to the mother and the brethren. How do I know this? Well, I know this because when we know about the story of Jesus' conception, an angel came to, the, to Mary and she received a word from the angel. And the angel said that she would bear a son. And he would be the only begotten son of our father in heaven. And Mary said, let it be unto me according to thy word. So when she received the word, she accepted the word, conceived, she accepted it and it took root in her belly. Now, that desire was given to her. That desire was given to her 
by a word that she not only received, but she conceived. She accepted it as true. So now, the man comes to Jesus and he says, your mother and brother are without and desire to speak with you. Now he says it twice. He says it in verse 46 and he says it in verse 47. So now we have here a desire, but not only a desire to, that was placed in her to be with him, but she also wanted to speak with him. So what's the importance of speaking? Point two, communication. See, first we have desire. Now we have communication. See, sometimes people might want to be with you, but you got to be mindful of what they want to communicate to you. So here, let's go back to mama. She's asking, baby, who your people? She's asking this question because she wants to know the character of which this person associates or where they come from. So she's asking who your people because she wants to know the essence of your desire and now she's communicating with this person to find out more about the way they think, what they know, and what they stand for. How do I know this? Well, in Luke 6, uh, the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke 6 and 45, let's take a look at that and see what it says. Luke 6 and 45. Luke 6, 45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, we can, we can discern what's in the heart by the consistency of what comes out of the mouth. So here, the, 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 the person in this, in this scripture, going back to our original text of Matthew 12, 46, says it twice. It says, someone without, which was the mother and the brother, wanted to desire, wanted to be with, a longing for, right, a passion to be with Christ, but also wanted to speak with him. So now, here's a teachable moment. Here's a teachable moment that Jesus says, he asked this question. And some people read this and think, oh, wow, Jesus was being mean. No, that's his mama. That's my dear. That's grandma. That's Gigi. That's Mimi. Standing without trying to get in. They should have a point of privilege. But what Jesus was trying to show us when he was talking to the man who was telling him this, he wanted to show him, I'm not confused about who gave birth to me. I'm not even confused about my brethren, but I want to teach you something. See, they weren't currently with him, but they had a desire to be. They wanted to speak with him, so they wanted to communicate with him. So Jesus asked the question. He says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Then he stretched forth his hand. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When someone asks you a question, and you get baffled because you don't know the answer, but God is so good that Jesus not only asked the question, but he gave us the answer. Right? So this was a teachable moment where he's saying, He's asking him, okay, you're coming to me telling me someone wants to be with me, someone wants to speak with me, but let me ask you something. Who is my brother? Who is my mother? And then he goes on to say, as he stretches out his, his hand, to, and he stretches out his hand, he goes, behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. So now he's clarifying. Let's look at this past the 
the small realm of who gave birth to me. Because we know we are the body of Christ. We are one family. We have a church family. You have your work family. You, you know, people say, oh, this is my family. These are my people. Right? But you got to ask yourself and go back and say, what qualifies them to be my people? Just like mama wants to know who your people. Because if you don't have the character that supports what mom is trying to teach you, then mom will say things like this. Be mindful, sweetheart. Birds of a feather flock together. You want to be mindful of who you're hanging around. Because association brings about assimilation. See, we've heard those. We've heard those things. But sometimes when we're young or even when we're older, we don't want to hear that because we don't want to get left out or we don't want to be viewed as doing too much. But here Jesus is teaching us about character of the family. And so he tells us whosoever, whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and my sister. And so we talked about desire, having a longing to be with Christ, right? We talked about communication, the value of communication, that we can discern what comes out of the, based on what comes out of the abundance of the heart, it comes through the mouth. So if you're around somebody who's talking, gossiping, being disruptive, perverse, doing all sorts of things, you got to be careful because everybody can't be in your company. Everybody from the outside can't be in the family. So Jesus clarifies this. He says, this is my family. Whosoever does. Third point, commitment. You got to be committed. What does commitment, what, what, what does he mean? Let's go back to Proverbs. Now I want you to write some of these scriptures down because... I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to go look it up for yourself. See, I, I'm, I'm just like you. I'm a human. I'm a student. I'm a disciple. I'm studying the word of God. And the Bible says, study, show thyself approval, workman, unashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is a, it is a, a commitment as a born-again believer, disciple of Christ, to study that which we are now. God has called us out from amongst the world. Not that we should minister to the world, but he's called us out so that we can be ambassadors. We are a peculiar people, a holy nation. So God is saying, study, 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 show thyself approved. So go back and write these scriptures down, and you go back and meditate on the word day and night, and let it bring about revelation to you. So let's look at Proverbs 16 and 3. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and your works shall be, your thoughts shall be established. So now he's saying, make a commitment. Make a decision. Are you without and you want to be in, or you want to straddle? See, his mother and brethren were committed. They committed their work unto the Lord. See, Mary knew from the very beginning when she received the word of God and when she conceived it, when she said, let it be unto me according to thy word. So at that point, she made a decision. She made a decision to do the will of God. So Jesus was not confused about if that was his mother who gave birth to him. He was explaining that motherhood or brotherhood, because I don't want to leave our brothers out today, even though we're honoring mothers, is about committing to the call of Christ. So we have another scripture we want to talk about. And that's John 10 and 27. The book of John, the, the gospel of John 10 and 27. Let's look at that. And the scripture says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. See, you got to know who you're listening to because what you listen to can move you closer to God or it can move you further away from God. See, 
Even in this uh, scripture, our original text, Matthew 12, 46 through 50, I want you to pay attention to the order of things. Without, desire, speak, commit. So you want to make sure that you're committed, but to be committed, you got to spend time. You got to spend time with the Father. Because if you don't spend time with the Father, you won't recognize his voice. So that's why he tells us in John 10, 27, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So going back to the family, mother wants to know who you're listening to, what, you listen, what you're listening to. See, because she understands that what you're around, what you listen to, what you're talking about, what you're seeing, it's affecting your character. So again, she's questioning the person without, baby, who your people. She wants to know the character. She wants to know what you listen to, what you believe, what you stand on, what's your real desire. And that she can determine this also by what's coming out your mouth. So we want to be committed. We want to be committed to a point that where we are men and women of our word. Isn't that what mother teaches us? To always be a woman of your word, be a man of your word. So now we talked about desire, a longing. We talked about wanting to be connected to Christ. And we talked about speaking, communication. So we talk to God. We pray. We meditate on his word. We hear the voice of the Holy Spirit because we know him. We spend time with him. We're mindful of the company that we keep because we know words are power. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So whatever comes out of the, out of the mouth, it's consistently, it's in the abundance of the heart. And we know we commit our, our works unto the Lord. We know this because we want to be a man and a woman of our word. One more scripture on uh, commitment. Psalms 37.5. Let's look at that. Psalms 37.5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. See, when we make a commitment to Christ, we're in fellowship, we're in relationship with Christ, right? We have a desire. We communicate, we commune with him, we talk with him, we laugh with him, we cry with him. He comforts us. We commit to him. We commit our works. We commit our ways. And it shall come to pass. So this goes back to the last thing. The last part, the last point that we're going to cover today, and that is obedience. See, God said, Jesus said, whosoever do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, is my mother, my brother, and my sister. So it's not that you just doing something. You're doing specifically something. You're doing the will of the Father. And so we can look at the book of James. James says, James 1 and 22, he says, don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer. Right? James 1 and 22, don't just hear the word today and, 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 and walk away and don't let, and don't let the word Con conceive in your heart. See, when something conceives, it, it makes a connection. See, there's a, we receive a lot every day, right? We receive information on the internet. We receive uh, information on social media, but it, we don't retain it. But when conception takes place, now development begins. So Jesus is saying, do the will 
Do that which God has called you to do because we are a family. Jesus said we are his family. We are his mother, his sister, and his brethren. Whosoever does the will of my Father in heaven. And so James says, don't just be a hearer, be a doer. And so we're going to look at a couple more scriptures and see how does this please God? How, how does this please God? 3 John 1 and 4. 3 John 1 and 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Not just know the truth. Not just quote the truth. But it says, I have, great, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. See, that's an example of doing. Right? You can say something. You can hear it. You can say it. But it's a whole other level of commitment when you do it. When you're walking in it. Philippians, oh my, this is one of my favorite scriptures. One of my favorite scriptures. Because sometimes we ask ourselves, Lord, I, I just, I want to do it. I, I, I want to do this. I just don't know why. I, I don't know why I can't do it. Well, we got to go back to the first one, desire. He says, delight in me. Delight in me. And I will give you the desire. But Philippians says, oh, this is good right here. Philippians 2.13. And I'm reading for the uh, King James. Version. It says, for it is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now that's something to shout about. Because once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we receive the promise and the power of the Holy Spirit. We walk with him. We talk with God every day. He's right there with us. He's in us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. And then he says, for it is him, God, which dwelleth in us, that worketh in us, both to will and to do. He gives you the will and he works and he walks it out through you. Oh, that's something to shout about. That's something to shout about. And then we have Proverbs 6 and 20. I know I'm going through a lot of scriptures, but I want to give it to you because I want you to be able to go back, and I hope you're writing this down, but I want you to be able to go back and see this for yourself because it's one thing to hear it, but it's another thing to read it, receive it, and conceive it. Right? And then, see, we're all mothers in a sense. That's what I want you to see. Because this process of receiving, conceiving, nurturing, bringing forth. See, every time we receive a word from God, when we meditate on it, it takes root. It's a conception that takes place. And that conception starts to get nurtured as you meditate on it day and night. And that fruit from that word that comes forth. See, he says, if, if, if you just... Commit thy way and thy works to him. It shall come to pass. It will come forth. It will spring forth. So now we're looking at Proverbs 6 and 20. Again, my son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. So here he's saying, be obedient. See, the reflection of, of God's family is what we see in the natural. So you have parents, you have a mother who teaches you. She teaches you because she wants you to grow and develop. And guess what? You produce after your own kind and then you have children and, or you have stepchildren or godchildren or foster children or you have your other children, your play daughter, your play son, your other son. You see where I'm going with this? Okay. But God is saying be obedient because we know obedience is better than sacrifice. And the last scripture I want to cover today is 1 Peter 1 14, 16. 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16. 
as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he who hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. He says, as obedient children, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so ye be holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So let's go back through. Desire. We see in the scripture of Matthew 12, 46 through 50, that there was a desire. Jesus' mother and his brother had a desire. They were without, but they wanted to get within. But she had a desire. She had a desire. She longed and a hope to be with her son. Do we have a hope and a longing today? And not only a hope and a longing to be with him, but to speak with him. Do we take time to communicate with God? Do we take time to pray? Do we take time to build our relationship with God? Do we, do we take time and, and really listen to him? Do we know his voice? Have we studied to show ourselves approved? Are we mindful of what we're listening to? Who we're listening to? Are we committed? Have we committed what we do every day unto the Lord? Have we committed our works? Have we committed our way to the Lord? Because he said, we commit ourselves to him, it shall come to pass. Are we committed? Are we committed to this calling? Are we the whosoever will do the will of God? What is the will of God for your life? Do you know? Have you asked him? Have you talked to him? Have you spent time with him? We are the obedient children. How do we know? Because God has called us for such a time as this. In a world where there's so much going on, and it's time for the people of God and the children of God to step in and step up. It delights him. He is rejoicing when his children walk in truth. Not just hear it, not just say it, but when we do it. And it's important that we know our will because God has a plan for each and every one of us. A plan to prosper us, not to harm us. A plan for a hope and a future. Take time to delight in him. Take time to talk to him. Take time to listen to him. Be committed. But most of all, obey. Don't be just a hearer. Let's be a doer of his will. So when mother says to your friends, to your colleagues, to your associates, to your suitor, baby, who your people? Understand that she wants to know your character. She wants to know what's your desire. She wants to know what kind of communication do you operate in. I can discern that by what's coming out of your mouth. What are you committed to? Are you committed to the Father? And are you obedient? Are you obediently pursuing and walking according to the will of God for your life? Now, if this is something that you're not sure about, but you are one that's standing without, and you're saying, I'm without, but I desire to be within. I have a longing and a desire to have a relationship and be a part of the family of Christ. And I want to talk with him, and I want to walk with him, and I want to hear what he has to say, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be committed, and I'm ready to know the will of God for my life because I know that I was born and created for a purpose. If that's you today, then I say, come forth.